uh, since we have very little time left, uh, I would really, uh, you know, request for short answers. I promise I'd be short with my questions. Uh, so uh, can I request uh, Christian to also please uh, switch on your camera? Yeah. So uh, we are going to be talking about the value additions of HGT for different applications. So due to higher prices, HGT modules have been traditionally a product for residential rooftop. So how do you see HGT competing in this field today? And what type of HGT modules do installers prefer for these uh, applications? Uh, this is a different question to answer because um, basically for residential rooftops, by facility is not a very important um, feature. So I would say that uh, there is where back contact cell uh, or heterojunction will be face to face. Uh, you can do back contact cell with heterojunction, but it is not implemented in the market yet. But I think that uh, typically rooftop uh, customers want uh, the highest efficiency. So it's going to be a split between heterojunction and back contact cell. They are similar in cost right now on the market. So that will be probably, it's a strong market, but uh, not as strong as the utility scale. Okay. Peter, would you like to add to that? Yeah, for, for our, our application, we do have the benefit of the high bifaciality of the heterojunction. This is why for us, we are only only using heterojunction to yeah, achieve the highest power available. And for us, it's it's um, the market standard at the moment, yeah. Okay. And when will we see HGT really being uh, used in the utility scale segment? When when will we see that tipping point, so to say? So today, <laughs> um, <laughs> it really depends on the view of the market. Typically, large projects are developed maybe one year in advance, even up to two years. So today, uh, the development is being done on many utility scale projects on heterojunction all over the world, in Europe as well. We have over 350 megawatt in Bulgaria installed and many other projects right now being signed. Um, the point here is always the same. Um, the price gap of the product means that uh, you need a justification to do heterojunction because the product itself is more expensive. In terms of the vertical installation, the justification is quite clear. The bifaciality is so high that it's just a complete package. In terms of... Uh, Utility scale, the justification for a, for an IPP or developer is lower LCOE, which is today already what happens. But development of projects many times go through an EPC, who is the final contractor, let's say. And many times they only have the um, motivation to reduce the total system cost. In that case, it is right now a little bit sometimes better, sometimes not. So the market acceptance of heterojunction will increase the lower we will get with the cost. But I think that the time for IPPs and developers is very clear, is today. So, so what are the uh, you know primary factors that have made HGT such an attractive proposition for utility scale? So let me tell you, uh, so I've been in photovoltaic many years and I've done heterojunction for a long, long time, but we were always very expensive that time at Sanyo. It was always this uh, object of uh, desire. Everybody wanted to do heterojunction because of the really, really good performance. The track record is 20 years with very good results, low degradation, almost no problems on the field, due as well because the cell is very simple. So everybody always wanted to be able to install heterojunction because it was proven to be so good. But it was always the cost. It was so high. So nobody, everybody was like, let's do, ah, no, no, it's too expensive. And now that heterojunction is no longer so expensive, all of those people who have a lot of experience, they are thinking, oh, now I can use it because all of those advantages are in my hands. So it's kind of that psychological point. Well, Peter, would you like to add? I think I think it was the same for us, yeah. Okay, so um, um, we are at the fag end of our, uh, you know, webinar. Uh, so uh, just one quick question uh, uh, from Christian that uh, you have a dedicated module range for floating solar and there is a lot more, you know, there are a lot of more application, uh, you know, areas like uh, uh, building mm -hmm. integrated, vehicle integrated, carports, sound barriers, uh, probably Peter knows better. 
So all these things are there. So just wasn't planned to expand its market applications to any of these technologies in the future. Yes, uh, you mentioned the uh, floating systems. Everybody has floating system modules. Uh, I guess you just get a glass class module and it will work well in floating. But in our case, we have made a module that is uh, enough or well protected enough to be even on uh, salty water. This is because of our special protection against humidity ingress into the glass glass structure. Um, honestly, I think that we need to be very realistic. If you want a low cost of manufacturing, you need to be really big in terms of manufacturing. You need to do tens of gigawatts of yearly production. This means that uh, niche products, if they require a niche product uh, design, they will remain quite small and not so interesting. But if you can manage to get a similar product design from a uh, niche to the mainstream uh, utility scale, then you will have a winner. And this is what we did with the floating. We're using a generalism design. But if you go to car applications and some other very specifics, that's going to be tough to focus on that. We are right now really trying to get heterogeneity itself to its lowest cost and maximum performance, and that goes to utility scale. So one step at a time. Yes. Okay. So, um, Christian, as we discussed before the webinar, uh, you uh, probably could show us some simulations for FGT panels. Uh, would you be okay, able to? Yeah. Let me. Let me. Um, this here is an Excel sheet that we use internally just for uh, checking different configurations and knowing where the weaknesses of the product, let's say electrical characteristics are. And let me just share my screen. Um, the point being that if you are an EPC or even a developer, it's good if you generate one of these simulation tools for yourself. Uh, I, I know it's a little bit small, the letters, but otherwise we don't have the overview, so bear with me. Here, for, for instance, we have different modules that we can choose. A 66 cells G12. Uh, and let me do a funny thing. Let's imagine that you have a 700 watt Topcon. This, let's say, is top of the line with Topcon, absolute top of the line, uh, maybe end of this year. And let's get the worst uh, of our line with 705. Um, so this here is an efficiency that is very similar. And let's just imagine that we get the same price because that's almost no advantage because of the efficiency. So you see now we have at the same price with this five baht, a little bit improvement in the CAPEX. So it's a little bit cheaper to install because of the five baht difference, but we have a huge difference in LCO corrected uh, cost. So this kind of thing uh, you simulate, you can look at why this happens and you can look at the size of the site. You can play, for instance, to get um, a different DCAC ratio, let's say 125%, I change it. And then you see that uh, it even increases in this case, the, the difference. And you can go into the simulation and find out why this is. And then you learn as a designer, what is going on there. Here is just an overview and the results, as, as I said, quite positive because this is the reality. But uh, not every case will be so positive. If we get a realistic price, let's say something like this, and you only have five watt advantage for heterogeneity, you see that the installation cost is much cheaper for Topcon in both string and, um, and uh, central inverter. However, at the end, the LCOE is still better due to, well, the performance compared to it. But really, this is just an example. This has many calculations behind this going into doing the tracker length, calculating for each temperature, what is the length of the tracker and so on and so on. And all of this needs to be done uh, by the person who makes such a table in order to see what is important. Let's see, for instance, that uh, you go to a country where the wage is much lower, let's say 20. And then you see that the cost uh, changes. This can help you as well uh, judge if when you are a developer in different countries, you should choose different products for each one of the country. Maybe we go to an even hotter country, we change five degrees more. And then you see always online how the gap due to the performance is changing life. 
You can do as well here the results of the PVC uh, calculation instead of just assuming some calculations and you can link it with PVCs. And all of that is what is required, let's say at the EPC and developer level to make a judgment that is based on data and not just on some presentation like mine or some uh, publicity or advertisement or reading a magazine. I think uh, I yeah, yeah. I, I just wanted to show just a few changes so that this is a running table, not just a marketing act that was made to put a higher number in, in our case or something like that. No doubt. Well, we believe you. <laughs> and uh, I think uh, this uh, simulation has made the message a lot more clear. So uh, thank you so much, Christian, and thank you, Peter, for being here today with us. Uh, this is the end of our webinar. Um, so uh, maybe I... maybe one thing because uh, I think it's maybe not completely clear. This simulation is has been optimized exclusively for a very specific tracker topology. In this case, uh, one P tracker monoline with uh, up to three strings. And if you have different topologies of tracker, look at uh, then you or different mounting system. You need to very, very well uh, mirror the cost positions of that into the calculation. So just just that we are clear on that, because this is just a single case that we created for this type of tracker. It will be different for other topologies. Just just a call. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you once again, Christian and Peter. And uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, once again, we would like to thank Vassan Energy for Hello. sponsoring this webinar. Uh, before we end today's session, let me quickly remind you that all Diane News' latest solar PV technology reports and surveys are available for free download on our website under the report segment. And with that, we end today's special focus webinar, but we hope to see you all for our upcoming events. In February, we will return with another webinar on solar market developments. In March, we will have our Solar Power Plants 2024 conference, and in April, Join us for the Cell and Module Production Equipment and Processing Materials Conference 2024. Till then, keep reading Tiang News. Thank you all for your time today.